A vortex cannon is a device that fires donut shaped air vortices. It works by releasing a burst of air through a circular hole. The air in the middle of the hole travels faster than the air at the edges. This causes the air to spin, forming a stable donut shaped vortex. Here I've 3D printed a simple vortex cannon and sealed the back with a silicone membrane. I'm using a cotton wick soaked in propylene glycol and glycerin, which I'm vaporizing into the cannon. This is what it looks like in normal air. This cannon produces vortex rings that are too large for my vacuum chamber, so I 3D printed a smaller version which is about 40% of the size. The small cannon you can see here is the same shape with a cut balloon wrapped over the larger end. It produces much smaller rings. I was curious what would happen if you were to fire a vortex cannon at different air pressures and particularly very low pressures. This is the vacuum chamber I'll be using to carry out the experiment. This chamber has pass-throughs for electrical connections so I can operate devices inside. It has a digital pressure gauge that I will display on screen to show what the pressure is at each part of the experiment. The vacuum chamber is lined with felt to make the smoke more visible. The lowest pressure I'll be using will be about 1000 microns or 1 tor. Before I could find out what vortex cannon does in a vacuum I needed to design a remotely operated cannon that I could first fill with smoke then trigger from inside the vacuum chamber. The basic shape of the cannon is essentially a tube with a hole in it. Typically you then have an elastic cover that you would use to fairly quickly pulse the back of the tube. This creates a higher pressure that forces the smoke out the hole at the other end. For this I cut a balloon in half, stretch it over the opening the same as before, then I use a tire up to hold it in position. The next issue is how do I fill the cannon with smoke while it's inside the chamber? I realised that I'd need to have the wick inside the cannon itself. To be able to heat it while it's inside here, I passed through two screws through the outside of the tube and then wrapped a coil of nichrome wire on a small cotton pad. This is what will be soaked in the fluid to produce the smoke. The coil heats up and vaporizes the fluid. To attach the coil to the screws I used a hydraulic crimper to compress crimps around the wire and then bolted these to the end of the screws. The screw length keeps the coil away from the edges of the cannon tube, which will prevent the coil from melting into the tube itself. It also helps to decrease the amount of heat being transferred into the plastic that holds the screws in place. Next, I attached a solenoid to the back of the cannon, uh, which can be triggered by supplying 12 volts DC. The vacuum chamber has a high current pass-through for the heater coil, and a low current pass-through which I can use to trigger the solenoid. First I'll show what it looks like when the cannon is fired in normal atmospheric pressure. This cannon produces rings that are about 1 inch in diameter. Notice how the smoke mostly collects inside the tube, and when it overflows, convection immediately takes it up vertically in pretty much a straight line. Now we'll see what happens when I reduce the pressure down to 1000 microns, or about 1 millibar. At this vacuum level, 99.8% of the air has been removed from the chamber. As soon as the coil is turned on, smoke shoots out the cannon like a laser beam, then immediately starts to sink due to gravity. This looks like some sort of futuristic space weapon. The smoke expands immediately as it's produced inside the heat coil and blasts out the tube because there's almost nothing on the outside of the hole to stop it or slow it down. Even with the solenoid being activated, there's no noticeable effect. At these vacuum levels, there just isn't enough pressure for the membrane to actually affect the gas inside the tube. Just to make sure, I turned up the smoke and flooded the chamber, but still no apparent visible difference when the solenoid fires. To give you an idea of the pressures we're dealing with inside this chamber, normal atmospheric pressure at sea level is about 14.7 psi. The vacuum level in this chamber that's producing this smoke beam is 0.019 psi. If you're able to drive a car directly up about 160,000 feet from the Earth's surface, you could blast this vortex cannon out your window and you would see the exact same effect you're seeing here. You'd also be dead. So beside a laser beam of smoke, not much else really happens. But what happens if we increase the pressure in the chamber? In other words, we have a rougher vacuum. The pressure in the chamber is now about 10 times what it was previously, 10,000 microns, which is still very low pressure relative to normal atmospheric pressure. This level of pressure produces some really weird fire hose type smoke patterns. The smoke almost looks like a gel of viscous liquid, it's really weird. Here's a clip from another run I did about the same pressure, and the smoke is very clearly affected by gravity.
and at these pressure levels the solenoid has a very minor but slightly visible effect. So what happens if we increase the pressure again to maybe another 10 times? This is still very low pressure relative to normal atmospheric pressure. The pressure inside the chamber is equivalent to 60,000 feet in the air. This pressure is above the measuring range of my digital pressure gauge, but I have another gauge off camera that I'll be using to determine the pressure. At this point, the cyanide is starting to be able to push smoke out the end of the tube, but vortex rings aren't really able to form. It just falls out like droplets. Convection is very clearly having an effect on the smoke now, and you can see the smoke rising up from the cannon and looping back down. Convection causes hot or less dense areas of the fluid to rise and cold areas to sink. The temperature differences in the different parts of the chamber are causing this. The heating element in the cannon and the lights at the top and bottom of the glass introduce heat and the side surfaces of the chamber are relatively cold. When the droplets start to fall down they look a bit like jellyfish which is pretty cool. Now for the final test, I've increased the pressure in the chamber to about 2 psi, which is what you'd get about 40,000 feet above sea level. Now the smoke is definitely forming rings, but they have far less inertia and only travel about halfway to the edge of the chamber. There's also far more turbulence in the chamber now due to the high amount of air present. So that's where I stop the experiment. I'll just end the video on a time lapse of the chamber during the experiment which shows some really interesting effects over time, particularly at the vent hole at the top right. You can see the smoke slowly drifting in over time. Thanks for watching.